busy week or two in general as we jump on into this. Um, let's do something else from Chad. Anyone else watching Neeb Chan? Nope, not me because I'm casting. Hardest working man in SC2. Thank you very much. Boptimus Prime. You won 5% of the money I make of uh, unbanning people for money because it was your idea. Sure thing, mate. Sure thing. We have Scarlet to the top left hand side. She's from Team Expert, our Pink Zerg player, going up against the Red Terran from Team Elevate. It's Massa. Big match here tonight. Big match right now. Alright, so we get to the question that I left off at. Where is my favorite band at the minute? So hard to say. I'm really into like indie ish music at the minute. Indie, rock, that sort of stuff. Not really into too much of that. I just love so much at the minute. I say. I'm just going to say Arctic Monkeys because this always happens and I tell this story all the time how Arctic Monkeys always seems to be the band I listen to most even though I don't realize it. So I'm just going to say Arctic Monkeys. But right now anything with a guitar that's a little bit catchy and boppy and you can bang your head along to a little bit or knock your head along to, tap your foot to, that suits me at the moment. These matches are all live tonight. Yes they are. These are live on the stream. Risky saying things Master will probably will. I'm kidding, but maybe by the end, this goes Dragon 11.30. Dude, I don't think so. I mean, Scarlet's been killing it so far. Let's see if she can up her performance on WCS Mexico, where she went out in a bit of a shocker to Igers. Not that Igers, you know, that, you know, just, I mean, we expect the Scarlet to go all the way, right? So, let's see how she does against Master. Again, she did beat him in the WCS Mexico qualifier, so let's see how this goes again. Where does Wardy come from, by the way? Does anyone know? I do. I know exactly where I come from. Guess where? From the UK, mate. From the north of UK. Netherlands? No. It can claim Beisha and Nederlands speaking, but I'm not Dutch. That means I can speak a little bit of ne Netherlands. Isn't that good? I'm good at this, man. I'm getting good. My Dutch is getting okay-ish. Not really. He's a Brit from Newcastle. Corwin's on the case, answering the questions before I can. Is the UK not CEST? Nope, it is not. It is not indeed. All right, guys, we're kicking this off. Let's talk about the game and what we're seeing already. Scarlet with, well, link speed and two couple of queens, six links. I guess not really too much crazy going on. She'll pop her third hatchery down in the near future. I like this, hiding the drone away to the top side early so it doesn't get denied by the Reaper. And one of the reasons we don't actually usually see a uh, hatchery coming down as early as this when there's a Reaper out is because you can't get the drone out there because the Reaper is going to try and target it down. So Scarlet just sends it out a little bit earlier avoids the reaper and then puts that hatchery down whenever she wants it to go down so that works out nicely i'm just going to be seeing this reaper just backing away now from the natural expansion i'm going to see cc coming up in the natural of massa of course and his follow-up is actually going to be the double racks follow-up so going to be that stim pack coming in and it's going to be that 2-1-1 which is going to be looking to fight and engage at about the five minute marker so that's going to be happening at about the five minute mark i'm going to see this factory finishing up here in just a moment or two and we'll be seeing the starport coming down. So for the next minute 45 or so, we're not too interested in what's happening in Master's base because we pretty much know what the case is going to be. Now Scarlet, she said very interestingly the other day when I was... Uh, I can't remember what it was in. I think she actually just came in the stream chat and she said, This build is a free win against as a Zerg player because you just mass up queens and links and that's exactly what you want to do as a Zerg player anyway. So I think she said you mass queens, links for a bit and then just drone and you just win the game. So let's see if that's going to work for her here as we set up into this game. A few Ling's already sneaking around the left side, going to shut down this Reaper. Don't think... Ooh, there is a ledge here. Scarlet's already kind of ahead of the game, though. Pulling the Zerglings further along. They're going to go down another ledge. More Ling's already coming down this side. And the Reaper might actually just get away at this point. You see another grenade well placed as well. Ooh, but it hits the Reaper. And now it's very low on health, but the Marines come in to save it. Reaper stays alive. And that's actually quite nice because the Reaper staying alive means it can come in as part of the next engagement, as part of the next fight. And when it comes in as part of the next fight here, well, you can throw the grenade down and that's going to be part of the engagement rather than not having it as part of the engagement, basically, is the simple way to put it. A few Zergons will come into the left-hand side and they're going to start working their way down on these rocks. Those rocks start to take some damage. As we've seen, Master just coming up the right-hand side of the map with this Reaper. What I find interesting is Scarlet oftentimes used to make a lot of Zerglings against the Terran player doing this build on this map. Not going to be doing that anymore. It's obviously sort of changed up her plan. It actually was something she didn't do at this point in the game, but much earlier, like at about 25-ish workers. So it's obviously very different from her. Look how many drones she has. 52 workers. Does she not know this is coming? Because right now she has four queens, five lings. I just don't think she expects it to be this build order. She saw a factory building a reactor, though. So I mean, what does she expect it to be? She's out on a spore crawler now. This is going to be very intriguing because these medivacs go to the left-hand side. She really has very few units at this point. 
Now she makes 22 lingus. When this attack comes in, usually we see a, dr a Zerg player at 42-ish workers. Scarlet is like, or 42 is kind of even on the high side of things. This is 55 drones from Scarlet. This is incredible. She can hold on to this. She's going to be in a great position. As a couple of overlords go down straight away, she's got more lings already on the way out. We'll have to replace those overlords, though. Let's see we go. We're going to be running on in. Well, pushing these uh, medivacs and marines back with those queens right now. And the second's just going to be coming up in towards the high ground once again. The seven more overlords being made. The lair is starting to build. And there's a bit of Ness coming down too, getting ready for the follow-up attack. The Scarlet not going to fight this just yet, just wants to wait, make sure she has the Queens to fight at the same time as the Zerglings, and that's exactly what's happening now. Forces the lift, Massa not going to throw away any units, knows how important it is to keep the units alive to really make the follow-up so much more powerful. Nice Widowmine in the back, picks off seven workers there, will get taken down now as she continues to push these units away. Them seven worker kills, the first damage which Massa's really found. Scarlet now goes into 14 more drones. It is double engineering bay on the other side of the map, which means Massa will head into a third base. And we'll mostly just look to continue drop harassment around the map here to get something done throughout the game. So won't necessarily be looking to kind of really do too much more damage. Oh, that's a mistake though. Spore crawler is not quite going to get the medivac, but it's so low. That has to be very cautious here going into the future engagements. And we've seen a few marines coming down the left hand side. So a few Marines is coming down the left-hand side, backing away from this. And again, I feel Scarlet's defending this pretty nicely. She goes back up into a very solid drone count. She starts up her next set of upgrades, plus two Carapace. It is going to be Bane and Speed on the Bane and Nest, and plus one Melee. Going to be finishing soon to allow her to go into plus two as well. And that allows Scarlet at this point to basically set up into Ling Bane Muta, which has really become, once again, the meta game. Kind of the meta shift in TVZ to play Ling Bane Muta against the Terran players. Already, though, a couple of Liberators on the way out, and I wonder if Master's using these for harassment, or if he's just getting them up to prepare for all the Mutalisks he's expecting to come out in the near future. And then we're seeing these Marines just continue to pop out right now. We're going to see some Zerglings actually just going to chase away those Medivacs. The Medivacs getting chased away. And we're seeing a few Marines just unload from the right hand side. We're going to see this Armory coming up. And getting set to go. There's the Liberators. They're going to split up. So we are going to see harassment out of this. And just getting set and ready to go. What's up, you thermal? How you doing? Dude, you just missed my Dutch. Every time you come into the stream, I swear down, you just miss my Dutch. It's incredible. It's like you have a timer in your head, which is like, hmm. Morty just spoke Dutch in the stream. Better tune in now and miss it. Double drop into the back of the mineral line here. As, uh, Massa continue to kill off a few workers here and there. Trying to push Scarlet around and just bully her into position, out of position. Just keep her busy as we see the fourth base to the right hand side. That's probably going to go down here. But that's why she's double expanded. She says, well, you know what? If you take down one fourth base, bet you don't take down the other at the same time. So I'm still going to end up with one. At least that's the ideology behind it as we see Massa continue to push forwards with these few Marines. The pressure's doing a really good job at keeping Scholar's kind of creep count low. Or creep count, I mean, just creep spread in general low. I mean, that's one of the main things you want to do against a Zerg player, especially you want someone as good as Scarlet, who's always very well known for how well her creep spread can be. So being able to keep her creep from kind of really becoming a factor in the game is really, really nice for you. It'll put you in a much better position with a much greater chance of actually having victory than usual. So you can see Scarlet's creep, very limited here and going to get limited once again. Massa continue to push it back and really not letting it go much further out than kind of Scarlet's own bases. Scarlet's going to try and push them down the left side. This fourth base is still un... Um, Unhindered so far, as we see Marines going to be pushing up through the center. It's going to be seeing the Marines, Mines, and actually Scarlet going to go to the right-hand side. Maybe setting up a little bit of a flank here. Queens are coming down to the left. Looks like they just want to spread creep. And Scarlet aware of that this army is here. She's going to cut off some reinforcements initially. It's a nice way to start. She sees the rest of the army now, so she knows she has to be careful and probably just back away from this to some extent. Again, maybe just look to kind of continue picking off reinforcements. She's going to get away to the right-hand side. More than anything, though, she's actually just keeping these units from pushing forwards, which is obviously pretty nice as well. Single turret scrapes a moot or two as they kind of fly by over the natural expansion. Another base coming up towards the front, Scarlet setting up into that as we still see more Marines continue to go down. I'm just going to be seeing. Just units kind of moving forwards again. Master's still trying to get in position. Scarlet, we've not seen many banelins from her so far, but it looks as though she's going to be trying to get a few up again. That queen going to go down, and here you go, Lingers and Muters. And set, we're going to start moving forwards. Widowmine going to go off and gets a pretty good start in connection, but for the most part, Massa is retreating. Doesn't want to fight this just yet. So he falls back. Maybe doesn't want to fight with the 2 2 disadvantage. He's only a 1 1 for another 10 seconds, so it's kind of a smart thing to just back away and wait for that, I suppose, more than anything. Scarlet is playing with such few Banelands here. I mean, she's only morphed in, I think, 7 for the entirety of this game. And again, that's a very low number to be playing against such a high bio force with. 
Moving these Zerglings around, she's ready to come in from a flank, come in for a complete surround on the Terran army if she engages in this location, which she might just be forced into as Marines continue to push up this left-hand side. Lings and Banes getting set to go again. Marines is going to be splitting up a little bit, and look at this, Link counterattack. Well, this is nice because she picks off reinforcements here. She's going to get into the mineral line too, and just pick away a few SCVs. It's a distraction, which allows her to engage much more nicely into this Terran army up at the top, because Massa isn't paying attention completely to the engagement, although right now, she is starting to lose out a lot of her mutilists. She's trying to transfuse them to keep them alive, still fighting in here. Maybe would have been nice to pull them back momentarily and then send them back in, but she doesn't. She keeps on fighting. And what we're going to be seeing is uh, we're going to see these couple of links still just working away. A few SCVs come in, surround, killing off a few more Zerglings. And well, Massa pulling all the way back to this bottom side. A few more links and meters moving across the map from Scarlet. Again, looking to see what's going to be going on. I'm just going to be seeing a hatchery coming up in the center of the map. A hatchery coming up to the left. And I'm just going to be seeing. Yeah, Muta's just sort of moving around. You can see Zirkland's trying to work the way through the rocks on the right side of the natural as well. Scarlet actually won that fight quite nicely. Did lose a lot of Muta's, but she'll rebuild those. Picks off that medevac as well, which is low on health. Nice little pick. Doesn't get away through these rocks, but will have a fifth base coming up to the front also. And now Scarlet will start to get that creep spread onto the map, and all of a sudden, very quickly here over the next minute or two, as Massa doesn't have momentum or position or anything or presence on the map at all any longer, this is when we start to see Scarlet's creep spread really come into play. I mean, it's going to be joining up together once again. Scarlet looking to see what's up, what's happening. A few Marines, a few Marauders stimming forwards here to try and push this back. A few changelings popping on down and trying to uh, attack forwards once again. Lingers and Banes to the left-hand side. Again, letting ready to uh, see what's going to be going on. A couple of meters coming out once more from Scarlet and trying to see what's going on. We see Master's lifted his third base up. He's going to use this as a fourth, which, of course... Well, I mean, it works, but it's never kind of the ideal situation because it means your fourth base is fairly unprotected. It's not that stronghold that Plan V Fortress would be. And that's obviously a little bit of a shame here to some extent as we see meters coming in again, just having a little bit of a fun time. I'm just going to be seeing Zergons running in again. Meters going to target down a few more Marines. This Invalen's going to keep on rolling in. Just going to be cleaning out just a few more workers here. Going to be seeing meters again pushing that orbital command away. This is... Um it's going quite nicely. Still this sort of uh, kind of set of units down to the bottom left side. And Scarlet right now just sort of giving us a masterclass on how to play this ZVT Mutaling Bane style. Yeah, it's not been clean, it's not been perfect, but for the most part it's been pretty solid. There's been very few moments where you look at this, you're like, oh, what's Scarlet gonna do now? You know, she's been in, for the most part, good control of what's happening. And what I find the most impressive is how she was just on so many more workers than usual going into or going up against oh big bane and hit over here. Going up against that initial sort of 2-1-1 attack. As we see Zergon's gonna keep on streaming in here, the meters are gonna keep on fighting. That's gonna be GG for Massa and Scarlet is gonna take game number one off. Let's introduce our players for game number two of this. Game one was great, really loved it. King Sage on station and Scarlet just showing us how to play that mutual Ling Bane style. Lots of counterattacks. Even when she had a creep denied for so long, as soon as she got herself a break, boom, that creep spread was there and pushing on out. As you're going to be seeing the pink Zerg player to the bottom left-hand side. Always impresses, right? It is our pink Zerg player. It is Scarlet from Team Expert. And to the upper right-hand side, our red Terran player from Team Elevate. It is Massa. Avocardi, thank you very much for joining the War Disciples and subscribing. Can we get some sub hype in the chat and some SE2i hearts going on in? Let's show some love to our new subscriber. We always like to show love here to people who support the stream because without people supporting the stream, I wouldn't be able to stream for 10 plus hours a day sometimes. I mean, it is um, pretty crazy. I am full-time, if you don't know. This is my full-time profession. You know, I'm doing this full-time. I'm continuing to work hard, continuing to do more and more stuff and, you know, all of this. So, um, yeah, if you do enjoy the stream, do consider supporting. There's plenty of ways to do so via subscribing, donating, cheering, Patreon page. And stuff like that. Thank you very much again, Avocardi. Appreciate the sub. And uh, thank you to the donators too again. Um, I'll get you guys updated on the donation list after this game. It's just been so hectic. We've been getting game after game after game. I've wanted to make sure that we get the games that we want to see, like Scarlet's games and watching Scarlet vs. Master, for example. Just prioritize getting those games instead of being like, huh, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just update the donation list and then, oh crap, we lost the game. You know, just don't want that to happen, so... Just going to be focusing on that for the most part. Thank you again, Avocardi, though. Appreciate the sub. As we see, Scarlet's opening here was a gas pool. Uh, not to be super aggressive with, just to sort of protect against a potential free rack sweeper. 
Scarlet's free actually, but defense is probably some of the best in the world, I have to say. Uh, once should I play against Bjorn in the Doe Star Masters? Probably a couple months ago now. She really revolutionized the way I thought about defending through Axe Reaper. Because what she did was she started up very normally. Obviously, this is like a, you know, when she knows, you know, now through Axe Reaper is more of a thing in the meta game. She opens with a bit more of a harder counter to it early on maps that favor it. But what she did in the past was she'd just go Hatch Gas Pool. She'd scout when she sees the second Reaper, cancel speed, start up a Roach Run. And she just go to four or five Roaches and a couple of Ravages. And obviously, that becomes the norm now. But back then, that was Scarlet. He really was the first person to start doing that. Super frequently, at least. As this pool first, obviously very useful to try and delay the CC from building. But yeah, um, she really revolutionized the way I thought about the defense because the thing is, she didn't just go for that sort of setup, but she was so good at controlling it. I remember her seeing literally out micro Bjorn and just completely shut down his Freerax Reaper play with her micro. It was crazy. Um, I remember her complaining actually because she was defending these uh, free axe reaper opens so well, trading so much better, and then Bjorn was still winning with the two bears timing afterwards. And she was like, "Well, how am I meant to defend this? Like, I played so well, I played almost perfect." Um, and she just didn't quite obviously have the final kind of touches to kind of defend the follow-up, but defending the actual free axe reaper, she was so good at it. And honestly, I'm kind of glad Massa didn't go free axe reaper because while well, it'd be fantastic to see Scott defend against it, it'd also be a bit painful to see him. Maybe run into a brick wall, basically, as Scott just bats it away without really much issue at all. SFV going to finish up the command center on the natural expansion. That is very delayed, actually, in the end here. I mean, it feels very delayed anyways. That SCV coming down from the low ground, uh, from the high ground to build it. Reaper. Let's pick up a couple of kills. That's just the two Zerglings here early. The first SCV did go down, which is why it took so long to continue building the command center. So that was a little bit of a mistake. As we see, Zergling just going to run in. Actually, a couple of Zerglings going to try and get another SCV kill. Nice micro master pulling that late SCV to the left side, where the Marines are, of course, nearby to protect. And what else is going on then? Creep just going to continue pushing out onto the map. Master is once again gone for the two racks, 2 1 1 based opening. When I say 2 1 1, I mean two barracks, one factory, one starport. And that leads into the two Medivac 16 Marine Stim drop, as we saw in the last game. Very common build order. Although, actually, sorry, I'm completely wrong because this is a super fast third CC. So it's actually a little bit different. So it's actually going to be that build order at Massa. But what he's done is he's actually inserted a third command center into the build. So he's actually got a much faster third base than usual. And then he's going to go into the 2 1 1 pressure. And the 2 1 1 is such a good setup. And this is kind of proof of that that the 2 1 1 is a solid build, even if it doesn't just catch your opponent off guard. Because you can keep on harassing. And that's going to be shown here by Master, who says, well, actually, even though I'm going for a third CC early and my 2 1 1, you know, my initial drop will be later. It's still a good build to do because it puts me in a position where I get drops on the map, I start to do a little bit of damage, I pick it away at a few units here, a few units there, I slow down the creep spread. It's just a solid build all around. And this is really kind of, just to kind of, again, just kind of uh, testifies to that by going third CC and then still following up in a very similar manner as you would with the 2 1 1. So, it's cool to see. And it is a solid build order. It's a reason it's become really a standard in the meta game because it has just got to this point where, you know, so players expect to play it, they know how to defend it, and yet it's still so good because there's the opportunity to do damage and snowball, but even if you don't, you're in a good position anyway, you can harass around the map, you can take map control, you have a presence, you slow down creep spread, there's so many positives to it, and it's, you know, again, it's dominated the metagame for a long time, it still does dominate the metagame, although we do see some more factory-focused uh, factory openings nowadays. Marines will drop off over here, this overlord is going to get taken down, so that falls. We're just going to be seeing at this point a couple of evolution chambers continue to come up. We're going to be seeing the plus one melee and the plus one carapace coming in from Scarlet. As the two medevacs are going to lift up once again and still just moving around looking to see what exactly is going on and what exactly is happening. Bane and Ness going to be finishing it in just a few moments time. Another hatchery coming up in the main base. Scan comes down and Marines is going to keep on pushing forwards. I'm just going to be seeing, uh, well, continue to see how this will continue. Armory comes up from Massa in the back as well. Just extra barracks coming down. So again, not going to commit too much with these first men of Axel Marines. Just wants to pick off some creep on the edges. I mean, obviously it initially forces Scarlet to make some Zerglings to defend too. But Scarlet still has to be careful. Like, Zerglings on their own won't fight against this. She needs the Zerglings and the Queens at the same time. And it's often one of the mistakes you see when a Terran player does this build order. Um, yeah, it's one of the mistakes you see from a Zerg. You see they have the Queens, they have the Lings. But then the queens get fought, you know, fight on their own, and they die, and then the lings die because they fight on their own. It's really a combo, you know, it's a group effort, it's a team effort. Zergs have to learn about uh, teamwork between the lings and the queens. They have to, you know, if they don't work together, 
they die quickly. But the synergy between the Lings on the ground and the Queens targeting the Medivacs to get rid of the healing onto the Marines, that's what really makes the defense so well, uh, work so well, despite it only being Ling Queen against Marines with Stim, which doesn't necessarily sort of sound like a great idea initially. You see this one Queen just pushing away at that Medivac. Obviously that Ling Queen defense became a lot stronger when we saw the uh, kind of the Queen buff coming in, the 8 range buff. And actually the 8 range buff did make a big difference to uh, that sort of defense. This uh, medevac flew straight into the spore crawler, so obviously that wasn't great for Mass, a bit of a mistake there. But yeah, the 8 queen buff really just allowing the Zerg to sort of just defend in the earlier stages of the game a little bit more easily against all of these Terran build orders. To some extent, some would argue maybe a little bit too easily. But I, I don't know, I mean it's, it's still hard to say to some extent. I think TVZ seems as though it's more balanced than it's been for a long time. It's, um, it feels like a lot of fun, the matchup. We see it going either way quite often, and even late game, Terrans are starting to, you know, really have figured out, I guess, how to deal with the initial Ultras play and stuff like that, too, and how to take it late game, and that sort of stuff. Anyway, Scarlet here, she's up 73 drones to 62 workers, which is about fine, actually, for both players. Terran doesn't want many more SCVs than this, because he does have Triple Mule to work with as well. Scarlet, but well, she's already on, kind of, 3 to 4 base-ish saturation, especially as her main starts mining out. She doesn't really need too many more workers than what she's got. An extra base over here, again, sort of acts as like a backup fourth base. So if the uh, base to the bottom side goes down, she can transfer her drones over here and still keep on mining on a fourth base for a little while longer. So it's a nice little thing. And, you know, sometimes you want a macro hatchery at this stage of the game anyway. She actually already has one in the main. But, um, you know, if you've got the extra minerals, especially playing Ling Bay and extra hatcheries, can't go amiss because extra lava in this day and age is definitely um, something you're quite happy to, uh, to come by. Feelings to the top side. Gonna see Banelands morphing in once again. So, gonna see eight Banelands morphing in from Scarlet up here. Gonna see the Marines gonna stem forwards and Zerglings gonna start going down pretty quickly. So, lots of Lings going down swiftly here as we see continue to move in. And these Banelands are uh, gonna get shut down, I think. Actually, a few of them finish up, but not gonna do too much. At the same time, Scarlet trying to attack through the top side just before a 2 2 finishes. So, not an ideal timing. But you just get pushed away almost immediately. I mean, Massa, when you sit behind a wall like this, it's very hard not to take a good fight against Ling Bay Muda because how is the Ling Bay Muda going to run through a single depot up a ramp into this army and have a good time? Ling Bay Muda works so well because of flanks, because of counterattacks. Attacking straight up a ramp into this and through a choke, never, ever, ever going to be a pretty situation. 16 Banelings being added on by Scarlet to the right hand side. An infestation pit comes down over in the main base as well. I'm just going to be seeing. And there are a couple of meters continuing to pop out right now. These Zerglings to the top side, they're going to be rolling on in. And again, just having a look to see what's going on, what's happening. Zerglings continue to move forward here. And oh, with the mining initiative, we'll have to defend. Look at this. Huge wall coming up this uh, side of the map. And as we're going to be seeing Scarlet. You know, flying in with the meters and actually going to find a few reinforcements just out on their own. The main army is over here. The thing is, Scarlet has so many escape paths on this map that even if the army comes in from this angle, she can get away very easily if the Zerglings doesn't really need to kind of fly the meters over the army there. And that was a bit of a mistake. Lots of uh, SCVs going down. Run by hit into the uh, natural base as well at the same time, I imagine. So sorry, we missed that a little bit. There's still some Zerglings in the Bane up here as well. That's 26 workers lost in recent times from Massa. And Massa is maybe in a little bit of trouble now. Maybe being forced to what could be kind of seen as a bit of an all-in sort of attack as he pushes across the map here. Moving across and we're going to see what's happening. We're going to see Scott start running with the Ling Bane again, looking to keep on cleaning out. And you can see she is really starting to push all of this away. Ling Bane coming up around, the Muta's going to be looking to chase this away. GG from Massa and Scarlet. Well, she 